toils or danger be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next a bitter song. To him that over the, the crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that again we come into your presence. We come to worship you. We come to praise you. We lift up our hearts. We lift up our lives, Lord. In order that you can move us and release us, Lord, from our burdens in this life. We know, Lord, that we falter in our life. <clears throat> we so easily stray, we so easily are turned by the tempter snare of the world. <clears throat> but yet, Father, when we put our trust in you, when we put our lives in your hand, Lord, you uplift us, you guide us, you lead us. We pray, Lord, you forgive us of our sins that we have done. And that, Lord, you keep our eye focused on you. Focused on your will and your way and your word. We pray, Lord, as this world continually spirals down into sin and wickedness, that you, Lord, will open the heart of the unsaved individuals, those lost in sin, that you turn their hearts, change their lives, and bring them to you. We know, Lord, that not many will be turned Many will continue to live a life in sin and rebellion. But yet there will be some that you will pull. There will be some that you will call. And that you will bring them to you, Father. And that you will wash them as snow. And make them your child, your possession. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us turn to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms, and turn to Psalm 58. And the title of this message is called, The Fair Judgment on the Wicked. Let's turn to the book of Psalms, and turn to Psalm 58, and start reading at verse... Number one. Do you indeed speak righteousness, O gods? Do you judge uprightly, O sons of men? No, in, in heart you work unrighteousness. On earth you weigh out the violence of your hands. The wicked are estranged from the womb. These who speak lies go astray from birth. They have venom like the venom of a serpent, like a deaf cobra that stops up its ear, so that it does not hear the voice of charmers or a skillful caster of spells. O oh God, shatter their teeth in their mouth. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O oh Lord. Let them flow away like water that runs off. When he aims his arrows, let them be as headless shafts. Let them be as a snail which melts away as it goes along, like the miscarriages of the women which never see the sun. Before your pots can feel the fire of thorns, you will sweep them away with a whirlwind, the green and the burning alike. The righteous will rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. And men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. 
Surely there is a God who judges on earth. As we have, as we look at our world today, we fully understand the injustice, the tyranny, and that unfairness is the way of life. Just within this country, justice, fairness, being morally sound, all of this we do not see because those in power, those in authority, want to promote sin. Or rather, they do not want to stop it. Sin is rampant. Corruption is rampant. Evil and wickedness is rampant. <clears throat> the Psalm of David is a prayer for God's justice, God's favor, His fairness, His righteousness. When no justice can be found, we know we can rejoice in, in knowing that justice will triumph because there is a God who will judge with complete fairness. This is one of the imprecatory or cursing psalms that call on God to deal with his enemies, to deal with those who live a life of wickedness and corruptness. All of us want justice. We want to believe that we'll be treated fairly when a wrong has been done to us. That is what we want to believe. <clears throat> when we go to a court <clears throat> and the judge hears our case, <clears throat> we want to believe that he will hear it and be fair in his judgment, be fair in his ruling. The Old Testament is filled with references to justice, and Psalm speaks about, speaks about it quite a bit. However, many judges, many magistrates, many rulers in ancient times took justice into their own hands. They had complete authority with no accountability, no one to answer to. They had the power to make their own laws right there and then. Many judges and magistrates even wanted bribes to either make the sentence light or to release the accused. They were willing to be paid for the ruling in favor of the accused. The heart of man never changes. As they were centuries ago, so it is today. They may not be as openly corrupt as those ancient judges. Today's people in authority and power do just about the same thing as it deals with justice. Morality and virtue is virtually thrown out to appease a small number of people who want to live in sin rather than uphold common decency and the laws of the land. Many judges interpret a nation's law to fit their own bidding, all the while disregarding what the laws and regulations actually mean and actually represent. This is a sad predicament, sad situation we are in as believers in a fallen and wicked world. David tells us that these judges work unrighteousness, that they weigh out violence in their hands. This is to say that they meditate on a strategy for wicked schemes, for wicked rulings, or unjust rulings. And if we go back to verse 1, David asked a cynical question if these judges and rulers judged fairly. 
Verse 2, David says, no. All they do is work unrighteousness. They are not fair. They are not just. These men, or these judges, those in authority, only sought out injustice. They wanted power. They wanted position. They wanted wealth. They wanted influence. They could care less for fairness and justice. Fairness and justice was never in their hearts, nor in their judgments. All people are born totally depraved, totally sinful. This means all of us have a sinful nature, and character. We have that inner tendency to sin because that, that is who we are. Without being made new in Christ by God's power, sinners are prevented by their wicked nature from pleasing God. Such is the case with unjust judges. All they will seek out is injustice, disregarding the rule of law for their own wishes and their own ambition. The words and actions of these unjust judges are like poisonous venom in a serpent's fang, deadly, venomous, like a cobra which cannot hear its charmer. Such is the case with unrighteous judges who will ignore, turn away from, and disregard any and all encouragement to be righteous and fair. That unrighteous judge doesn't want to hear pure and good guidance. Their ear is closed, their heart is closed. And simply put, they do not want to rule justly and fairly. It will be against their nature. They do not want to hear it. They have nothing to gain from ruling fairly. They have nothing to gain from ruling righteously. David revealed the depravity and sinfulness of unjust judges and rulers in the first five verses of this psalm. Now he will reveal that God punishes the unjust because God himself is the ultimate judge. The judge of all things. The judge of the universe. David prays that the means of doing evil will be destroyed. Whatever power, whatever authority these unjust judges may have, God will take that away in his time. The unjust judge may believe that he has a lot of time. A lot of time to gain more power, more wealth, more influence. To be bribed. To be paid off. The wicked may believe that they have all the power and influence. They may believe that they have all the time in the world. That is not the case. Their enjoyment will be short-lived because God will judge them in the end. As water disappears into the sand and the dry riverbed, such tyrants will eventually disappear. They may have their time in the limelight today. They may have their time in power and authority today. But their time for judgment will come. Just as arrows that are useless without an arrowhead, they will be useless in their intentions to do evil, in their schemes to do evil. All of that will come to nothing. All of their evil judgments, 
all their evil intentions from the court. All of it ends when God passes out his infinite and fair judgment upon them. Just as a snail makes, melts away as it goes along, such will be the judgment upon the unjust authorities of the land. They can continue to be unrighteous and unfair in their rulings and decisions, but all of that gains them nothing in the end. It certainly doesn't gain them heaven. And the end is coming. With a miscarriage, such a child never sees the sun, and so is the case with the unjust judge. They cannot see their end. They can live it up, but their time to be judged is coming, and it will be swift, and it will be certain. God is a swift judge. His judgment on the wicked will come. His burning wrath will descend like a whirlwind, carrying away the wicked. All those who practice evil and wickedness, their time is coming. They eventually end. Their judgment is coming. Now the righteous will rejoice as they witness the judgment and vengeance of God. Those who have felt the unrighteous rulings of these judges will see and witness God's judgment on these individuals. Now, if we step back, we may think that this is a harsh, harsh to rejoice in condemnation of the wicked and of just judges and rulers. But remember, David wrote this psalm as a cursing psalm because against those who practice injustice. That is their lifestyle and behavior. They do not want to change. Washing their feet and their blood is a point of figure that the wicked will eventually be defeated and judged and that the righteous will share in the Lord it is victory. Today we might believe that God is indifferent to the injustice of today's society and the world. We might believe that there is no hope that any, any and all sense of justice, common decency and fair play is non-existent. We falsely believe that all people, our leaders, those in authority, should be just and fair. However, when they are unjust and unfair, people suffer. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Elected officials pull power away from the people and they pull it to themselves. Morality as we know it disappears altogether. When right triumphs at last, the righteous will rejoice, will praise. We need to realize and understand that there will be a day of accountability and that God judges fairly and he judges righteously. Be assured there will be a day of reckoning for all those who practice injustice. Their day of judgment is fastly approaching. Yes, we live in an unfair and unjust world, but it does not mean we, are, we live by its standards or follow its ways. The believer in Christ must never be unfair never be unrighteous. It would seem to be so easy to compromise to the world, 
letting injustice and immorality rule because that is what sinful man wants. That is what the world wants. If you are in that position of authority, if you are that judge, follow the rules of the land and above all else, follow your belief in Jesus Christ. Jesus was not one to buckle under pressure when society cursed at him, scorned him, called him names. All he did was follow his father's mm -hmm. will. Being just and fair may not be the in thing to do, especially when it goes against the world's sinful pattern. But it is the right thing to do. The right thing to do as a believer in Christ. Amen. and fair God. But you also reveal that in this world there are unjust and unfair people. And when there are judges or those people in authority, that can be even worse because they can be unjust in their ruling. They can be unjust in the way they settle a case. But I pray, Lord, that as you lead and empower your children, Lord, that we know that you are the ultimate judge. And although the world will judge against your children, we know that you, Father, will judge the world in your time. You will judge the wicked. You will judge the unfair and unrighteous judge. Their time will come. All we need to do, Lord, is put our trust in you, knowing that your justice, your righteousness will prevail. 
he will prevail in the end. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.